Hey guys, how's it going? So today we are going to build a calendar from zero using Ruby on Rails. Now, if uh, before we start building a new calendar, let's have a look at the solutions that we already have. So I will go to the Ruby toolbox, and here I have a list of different calendar gems. First of all, we have uh, iCalendar that stands out, and this is not just a UI calendar gem, this is actually the gem to manage the ICS uh, document protocol. I previously created a video and a blog post about how about how to use it, so like this is more or less how the ICS protocol looks. Uh, then if we scroll further, there is the simple calendar gem, that is actually a gem to uh, create uh, a... UI calendar, it looks more or less like this, and uh, the gem provides you a month calendar, week calendar, and uh, other types of uh, calendars. So it provides you uh, for such a kind of basic UI of a calendar, and for each date you can display different uh, records. Now, uh, I actually use this gem in one of my production applications. It looks more or less like this. Here I have uh, a monthly calendar and here I have uh, events. I see uh, that there is an event on the like 30th of uh, November 2021. I see the list of uh, people who should have attended and who attended and who did not attend. Uh, this gem is actually quite nice. Uh, also, if we look at the uh, other solutions uh, for UI calendars in uh, the Ruby toolbox, all of them are extremely outdated, like they haven't been updated for decades. So uh, really the only calendar UI gem that there is on the market at the moment is Simple Calendar. Uh, here it is, it looks more or less like this. Now uh, also previously I have used the uh, Full Calendar, that is uh, a really nice uh, JavaScript calendar, uh, and uh, the good thing about this kind of JavaScript calendar is that you get uh, out of the box month view, week view, day view, lists, you can drag and drop events, move them from one uh, day or week to another. So looks uh, quite nice. And uh, what we're going to build is going to look more or less like this. So uh, from zero, from like nothing, we're going to build uh, a basic calendar where we can uh, go to the next month, previous month, uh, today, and see events uh, for a specific uh, day. So we are going to start with uh, just a list of events. Here I have a big list of Ruby on Rails conferences in the last 10 years, and we are going to display them in a monthly calendar. So let's go to our code, and uh, I will actually create a new controller. I'll name it uh, Calendar Controller. I will uh, copy the... Uh, Copy the like class names so on so I don't type them. Okay, I will have uh, class uh, calendar controller, and here I will have dev month, and uh, I'm going to create a root for this. So I will go to roots, and here we will have get uh, calendar slash month uh, to calendar month. The same way we could have a week or day, but for now we are going to just do it for the month. Let's try navigating to slash uh, calendar slash month. And we need a view template. So let's add it. I will go to my uh, views calendar. I will create uh, month.html.erb. And we have this empty view now. Let's uh, start by displaying today's date. I will say equals time dot zone dot now. Okay, we have today's date. Now let's display all the dates of the current month, of uh, the month of uh, this day. So uh, I could have uh, time zone now dot all month. Uh, so we have a range here from the first day to the last day of the month. And we can say dot each do day. And, and we will say equals day. Uh, all month uh, can't iterate from active support time with zone. Uh, let's say date dot today. Okay, and here we have all the days. Now let's display them in uh, a more readable list. I will uh, put some kind of divs. Okay, so here we have uh, all the dates. Let's uh, remove the equal sign here. Okay, looks fine. Now let's display this as uh, an actual monthly calendar. So uh, we'll have the week, uh, 
uh, days we will have the grid. Now, uh, talking of the grid, let's uh, not use a table, let's use uh, the CSS grid. I will say class uh, grid, uh, grid columns 7. We'll have 7 columns because we have 7 days of the week. Let's go back. And here we have this kind of grid. Now let's add some kind of borders. I will say class border. Let's add some kind of minimal height. Min height 24. And it already looks more or less like a, a calendar. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the current month, for example. I'll go back to this calendar. You see the current month starts on a Thursday. Uh, but in our calendar we have it... Uh, well. On, we have the Thursday on the, well, the first uh, cell. So we need to add some kind of uh, uh, spacing. Uh, actually, let's uh, also display, before we add the spacing, let's display the week uh, days. So um, I will go and uh, uh, we have this thing, uh, date, uh, abbreviations of uh, day names. And it should give us this uh, array. Now you see it th starts with a Sunday, but uh, I like a calendar th that starts with a Monday. So I will say dot rotate. And if we just have rotate, then we are going to move it by one. If we have rotate uh, two, then it's going to be starting with a Tuesday. So we are just going to have dot rotate. And we are going to display these also as uh, uh, cells. So I will say abbreviations of uh, dates dot each do uh, day and uh, let's say not day but like weekday equals weekday so here we are let's put this in the uh, divs And let's put them uh, also inside our grid. Okay, so these look nice. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Now, we want uh, the 1st of February to be uh, in the 4th cell. So we would need to add uh, some kind of uh, uh, offset. Uh, let's... Uh, Add this offset. Uh, how do we know what the offset is? Uh, the offset is based on uh, the beginning of the month of date uh, today. So uh, let's go and uh, go to one of the helper files. Helper. Let's make it in application helper. Let's say uh, define month offset based on uh, date. And uh, we're going to define it as uh, date dot beginning of month, weekday, uh, and let's try displaying this month offset. Let's uh, put it somewhere here. And date is date dot today in our current case. Okay, so the month offset is uh, four. And uh, for the month offset, we would want some empty divs to fill in this uh, blank space. So uh, let's say dot times do. And we are going to have a few empty divs. Okay, now we have it uh, starting, uh, the month starting on a Friday, but actually it should be on a Thursday, so we should... Uh, uh, decrease the offset by uh, 1. So I will say minus 1. But uh, again, it can be different based on whether you want Monday or Sunday to be the first day of the week uh, in your case. So uh, you would have to let maybe users choose the first day of the week uh, and this formula would be different and uh, this rotate would be different based on the user's uh, first day of the week. But uh, here it looks nice. The calendar starts on uh, a Thursday as uh, it should start on a Thursday. Okay, now let's make it so that we can actually scroll to the 
reverse month or future month. So um, instead of using day to day, we would want to uh, yeah. Let's add. Let's start with adding the links. I will say equals link to uh, let's say back uh, calendar month path. Uh, let's say date equals uh, date today minus one dot month. Here we have this link, and uh, we have a date that is one month back or. If we click it again, it will always be the same. So we want to make it uh, dynamic. So we're going to make this uh, date uh, dynamic. Let's go to our calendar controller. And here I will say uh, add date equals. So we're going to define the date uh, based on the params. Or if it is empty, we're going to take today's date. I will say uh, date dot pass. We're going to find the date from the params. So params dot fetch uh, date. And if it is not present, we will have day dot today uh, to stream. Let's uh, see if this works. Uh, so we have our date in the controller, and I will also make it available uh, in our view. We're going to use it instead of day today. So uh, we'll have date uh, minus one month, month offset date. Here we are also going to use this date. And uh, if we scroll back, it uh, is actually working. So we are in the ninth month now. Let's have a look at uh, the ninth month. Uh, September, the first day is a Friday. And in our calendar, the first day is also a Friday. So now, uh, so simple, we just uh, have a different calendar based on the date in our uh, params. And the same way, we can add a link to the next month. So it will be date plus one month. And a link to today would be just calendar month path. Okay, here we are. I go to today, I go to the next month, I go to the previous months, and everything is displayed uh, uh, nicely. Now let's also display the uh, name of the month and uh, maybe the year. Uh, so uh, I will go here and... Uh, I would say equals at date dot strf time, and uh, here would have uh, maybe at b and at y. So strf time. Okay. So here we have February two thousand twenty four, <coughs> March, April. Or going back so the dates are being displayed correctly and also here we don't want to have the full date we can just have the uh, day of uh, the month so uh, i will add another strf time in the day and here i would have uh, uh i don't know maybe just a small day name okay the first the second the third so looks uh, quite nice uh, what do we want to do next? Maybe we want to highlight today's day. Let's uh, find a way to highlight today's day. Let's say uh, here on this uh, div we will add addi an additional class if uh, um, if the day is uh, today. Uh, let's try doing this. I will uh, go to the helper and uh, say dev today for date and uh, I will say if uh, date equals date dot today then it is true and I will say def today class uh, for again a date will be for example background rows 200 if uh, if this is today and we will try applying this class to uh, the cell. So here I will have uh, something like this. I refresh. Uh, yeah, I would have add date. Uh, no, it's not working nicely. Um, no, yeah, it should be add day. Yeah, just the day. Okay, and today is the 8th of February and it is highlighted correctly. And this will be highlighted correctly only for uh, today, not any 
of the day. Uh, looks fine. Uh, what do we want to do next? Maybe we want to display the events in the calendar. Remember, if we go to localhost slash events, we have this giant list of events. So uh, let's try displaying the events. First of all, in the controller, I will say at events equals event dot fair uh, start. Now let's see what the name of the attribute is. Where start date in, is included in date uh, all month. Uh, let's uh, try displaying the list of uh, all the events for this month, at least uh, something to start with. Let's say events.count. Uh, so zero events for this month. If I scroll back, we have two events in January. So some kind of collection is uh, being displayed. And uh, let's display these events for a specific day. So uh, inside the day cell, I will have uh, something like events dot where start uh, what's the attribute name again where start date uh, is included in uh, day I think something like this uh, dot all day to be sure that uh, we don't check for a specific uh, moment in time uh, so we have the list of events dot each do event uh, I will have equals event dot ID and event dot uh, I think we have title name event name okay so we have zero events here I go to a previous month and here I have some kind of events let's remove the equal sign so you see we have uh, some kind of events displayed in the calendar looks uh, quite uh, nice now, uh, if we go to the console, uh, you see we have uh, these like uh, lots and lots of queries because we have like uh, a general query for all the events inside uh, a month in the controller. And then for each specific day, we run an additional uh, uh, query. So it looks uh, quite ugly. Uh, we can optimize it. Uh, so uh, instead of doing this query, I will go back to the calendar controller and here I will have uh, some additional grouping like group uh, by uh, I would have uh, event event dot start uh, date dot to date so now we are going to have uh, events grouped by days it's going to be another kind of data structure uh, we're going to have the day and events for the day and uh, if I go back refresh we are going to have some error but we see the structure so I see Thursday the 5th of October events uh, Friday events and other days are not even present so uh, now in our month view instead of uh, this uh, query I will comment it out I can just have uh, events for as for this specific day And uh, let's go here. So uh, if it is nil, I'm going to save it with the end. And uh, voila, if I go back here, you see we just run uh, only one uh, query in the controller and no additional queries uh, inside uh, our view. So this way the query runs uh, much better. Looks uh, fine. So we have a basic uh, calendar with today. We can uh, go to the next months, previous months. We display events in the calendar. And um, let's uh, go back and have a look at simple calendar. So if we look at it, yeah, there is some kind of basic UI. We also have uh, a basic UI, but they have also a quite nice uh, API for uh, def defining a calendar block. So we have, for example, month calendar, do date, and we have this date slot where we have the date and any additional information. Uh, here, you see we have uh, all this uh, code. Now, this is not uh, much, but uh, we can still make it more reusable. So uh, let's uh, create uh, a month calendar wrapper i will go and uh, create a wrapper uh, like a partial named uh, month.html.erb i will uh, move all this code here and uh, 
and what? And uh, I'm going to have uh, a yield here. Uh, so uh, here I will say equals yield. And we're going to pass that day. We'll make it available. And uh, I will move remove all these other things out of here. So we have this wrapper. And uh, we're going to run the the wrapper. So I will say equals uh, render calendar month. And we're going to pass the date is uh, at date do. Uh, and now this is going to be the content inside uh, a day. So we'll have do day. Uh, we have the day, we have uh, the list of events, and uh, I think it will not work because we need to define a date. Oh, it seems to be working. Let's check again. Yeah, it uh, it's working. So uh, you see, I abstracted the uh, everything into this month partial, and uh, really the user only will care about uh, uh, which content he wants to display in a specific day, and uh, he can separately uh, have this month uh, partial that is reusable. And uh, here we are just rendering the events for a specific day, uh, and we can style them, and we can like maybe even not display the day name if we want. So here we're not displaying the day names. So looks uh, quite good. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's already uh, for the user to style the events. Like I know we can uh, add some kind of additional divs, like class uh, 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 rounded MD, uh, background rows 400, div, and now the events uh, look uh, nicer inside the calendar. So yeah, that's about it. We created a basic calendar from zero. You see, you don't uh, even need a gem to create a basic calendar where you can uh, display the current date. You can uh, scroll to the next month, to the previous month, uh, uh, display events in the calendar, and uh, it is super simple and uh, no additional external dependencies. So thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.